Hello, everyone. I'm Dan Kleffler in New York. Sources close to five-term Maryland Senator Barbara Mikulski said that she plans to announce in just a couple of moments that she will not be seeking re-election next year. She's at the podium. Let's listen to the 78-year-old Congresswoman. The path of uh, the expressway that I got into politics challenging. Growing up here in East Baltimore was a real community. It's been an urban village. People lived, worked, and shopped and worshipped all here. But you know, it's not so much what we did, but it's about what we believed. Here, I learned the values from my family, my mother and father, from the nuns and priests who taught me, from the people in the neighborhood themselves, neighbor always helping neighbor, and that we were in this together. My great-grandmother landed here just a few blocks away with little money in her pocket, but big dreams in her heart. I got the chance to share in those dreams. We learned about patriotism, neighbor helping neighbor, that we were all in this together. And my mother and father had a little neighborhood grocery store. And every day, my mother and father would walk across the street, open up those stores and say, good morning, can I help you? And that's the way I was raised, this whole sense of service. And even today, as I go down to Washington, commuting from Baltimore, looking at the Capitol, I ask myself, good morning, how can I help you? So service for me is about solving problems, helping my constituents, making sure that they not only get by, but that they get ahead, and never ever putting their needs on a back burner. Now, in 2016, my election, re-election would be on the horizon. I have thought long and hard about the next two years. And I had to ask myself this question, who am I campaigning for? Am I campaigning for me or am I campaigning for my constituents? I had to decide how I would spend my time, fighting for my job or fighting for their job. Do I spend my time raising money or do I spend my time raising hell? Do I focus on my election or do I focus on the next generation? Do I spend my time promising what I would do or do I do it now and do it the way I like to do? So as I thought about who am I campaigning for, it really became clear that I'm going to campaign for the people. I want to campaign for the people of Maryland. I want to make sure they have a future, that they have a job, that they have promise and opportunity. So I'm here today in Fells Point to announce that I will not be seeking a sixth term in the United States Senate. This has been a hard decision to make. I have served in the Senate for a while, and at the conclusion of this term, I will have served over 30 years. That's hard to believe. And I want the people of Maryland to know there's nothing gloomy about this announcement. There's no health problem. I'm not frustrated with the Senate. The Senate will always be what the Senate is. And, but what I have decided that the best thing that I want to do is where do I spend my time? I want to give 120 percent of my time focused on my constituents because it's never been about me. It's always been about them. And I'm going to spend the next two years focusing on how I can help Maryland, how I can help, Mar uh, the, the, how I can help the nation, focusing on the middle class. My agenda will be, how can I give the middle class, both here in this state and around the country, a raise? I've yet to finish the job I started with Lily Ledbetter to make sure women do get equal pay and equal for equal work and are not harassed or punished for even fighting for it. I want to make sure that when they revisit the tax code that I give targeted tax breaks while others want to have tax breaks and jobs. I want to have tax breaks to send kids to college. When others are looking for big de deductions for big corporations, I want to make sure we raise the child care deduction to $6,000 a year to have a new uh, ca uh, caregiver 
uh, tax break to help those who are taking care of someone with a serious illness or those who are taking care of someone with Alzheimer's, like that took the life of my father. And for our young people, really to focus on the next two years to truly make college more affordable through a variety of programs. I'll be introducing legislation uh, to do that and to make Having some technical difficulties there from a big announcement coming out of Maryland there where five-term Senator uh, Barbara Mikulski has announced that she will not be seeking a sixth term. In fact, announcing her retirement at the age of 78 years old. And I want to bring in ABC's Arlette Signs to talk a little bit more about this. Arlette, a, a, a big surprise. Uh, so, uh, Senator Mikulski, the longest serving woman in Congress. What does this kind of an announcement mean then for Washington? This is a really big deal. Senator Mikulski is widely respected by both Republicans and Democrats. She's the longest serving woman in Congress. She served in the Senate for 30 years, before that in the House for 10 years. But as she noted in her, in her uh, speech just a little while ago, she said that she wasn't leaving because she was frustrated with the way that the Senate or Congress is working. Right now, you know, they're often found at a deadlock with both sides just n never being able to compromise. But she's saying that's not part of it. She's saying that she wants to serve her constituents in a different way and that she's ready to pass on to the next generation. One of the things that people love about Senator Mikulski, she's 4'11", she's very small in stature, but oftentimes her colleagues say she makes up for that in spirit. And in her uh, comments, she talked about raising hell, and that's something that she's known for. She gets out on the Senate floor, and she delivers very, very feisty speeches. And this will be a very big deal in the Senate that she is now leaving. First elected Congress in 1976, and then elected to serve in the Senate in 1986. Then what are her major accomplishments over those years? Well, one of the things that she's well known for is that she was the chair of the Senate Appropriations Committee for a very long time. She was actually the first woman. So that is a very powerful committee. They dole out some of the money to all of the government agencies. Um, so that was one of her big accomplishments. She's also known as the Dean of the Women of the Senate. Uh, she organizes these bipartisan gatherings for female senators and actually acts as a mentor to them. She's also been a champion of equal pay for women. She talked about that in her speech and in trying to uh, help people with college loans and, and those kinds kinds of issues. Had there been rumors that she in fact might be retiring? Well, right now is the time of year when we are waiting to hear from everyone whether they're retiring or not. We didn't know about her one way or the other. We know that she loves to be in the Senate. She's actually only the second senator to announce that they're retiring um, come 2016. The other one was Senator Barbara Boxer of California. She announced that earlier in the year. And there's already going to be a lot of speculation about who might uh, run um, after Senator Mikulski leaves. And who are some of those names that are being floated out there? So th there's quite a few names. One of them's uh, Congresswoman uh, Donna Edwards from Maryland. Also. Uh, Congressman Chris Van Hollen from Maryland. Another big name that's going to get a lot of attention is the former governor, Martin O'Malley, who just left this past January. He's also said to be considering a run against Hillary Clinton in 2016, but this could open up another option for him if he would want to pursue the Senate. And, and has Senator Mikulski, has she made any kind of indication either in speeches past or in any kind of personal reflections of who she might like to see fill her shoes? She hasn't made any indication, but expected to be someone who's really a champion just for the common people. You know, she started out her career as a social worker, and she one of her big first accomplishments was fighting to keep this highway from going through um, up to Baltimore communities, and that was su successful. So those are the type of people that she's going to campaign for, uh, people with fighting spirits. What will be interesting in Maryland is that it's normally a Democratic state, but in this past November election, uh, a Republican actually won, and that came as a huge surprise. So this seat could be up in the air. Senator Barbara Mikulski stepping down from the Senate after serving Maryland for five terms as a senator. Arlette Signs, Arlette, thank you so much. We appreciate your time and insight. You thank can keep up with the story in real time by downloading the ABC News app. Star in the story for exclusive updates on the go. I'm Dan Kleffler in New York.